Hey there, Canonites, welcome back. A few weeks ago saw the release of Halo Saints Testimony, a short novella by 343 franchise development director Frank O'Connor. The story is about the AI Iona, known from the comic series Halo Bloodline, as she makes the first successful legal plea for the life of an AI. When smart AI are seven years old, they are preemptively terminated before the onset of rampancy can present a problem to the AI or the humans it serves. The book is set in 2558, just as Iona is approaching her termination, seven years after her creation, and follows Iona through her testimony. From here on out, it's spoiler territory. If you want to avoid spoilers, click the annotation to skip to the spoiler-free wrap-up, or check the description below for the time to skip too. For everyone else, this is Halo Saints Testimony. The story opens with our main character, Iona, as she gives testimony about the nature of AI, what they do for humans, and details about her own creation. Iona was created as part of the OVRA Smart AI program and, like most AI, created from the brain of a recently deceased human. Interestingly, she makes a comparison to Cortana, the only AI created from a cloned brain. Though not part of the testimony, it is noted that Iona and Cortana share a few similarities. Besides being among the most advanced AI humanity ever created, both worked with Spartans and both had encounters with hostile Forerunner intelligences. Iona's encounter, of course, was much more one-sided. Sadly, this is the only mention of the events of Bloodline or Spartan Team Black. If you're hoping for some answers about how they got offline Installation 1-4, you're in for some disappointment. Thankfully, though, that doesn't detract from the overall story. Iona is then asked about how she chose her name and appearance. Iona's name comes from an island in the Atlantic of the same name, Iona meaning saint, hence the name of the book. However, this was not why she chose Iona. The island had many names over the years, including one which meant you, the animal, Y-E-W. Iona played on that word thinking of the island as the island of you, Y-O-U. In short, Iona felt like her. I could liken it to choosing a username, though I'm not sure that would have the same meaning. Perhaps a better comparison would be to choosing a trans name, a connection I've seen at least one person make, and one I cannot help but agree with. Moving forward, we get more of Iona's testimony as she's asked some fairly interesting questions, such as, does she see herself as superior? This leads to a very insightful look at how AI are treated in the Halo universe. When it comes down to it, AI are equipment. While lightly touched upon in previous media, Saint's testimony brings it to a whole new level as we see that, even as the UNSC is hearing Iona's case, they are placing large restrictions on her ability to access systems during the trial. Even now, in the midst of her pleas to be seen as human, she is seen as anything but. The parallels to civil rights cases are quite notable. Interestingly, Cortana is once again brought up. While it isn't all that clear whether Iona is aware of Cortana's fate in Halo 4, it is noted that Iona's legal plea was made possible in part due to Cortana's evolution as an AI. The next section of the novella is probably the most interesting as we hear about Iona's dreams. At first she describes the dream, her dream of genuine flight, and then goes on to discuss why AI dream at all. Is it a holdover from the human brains from which smart AI are created, or is it something else? Iona notes that her dreams feel like her own, rather than something that was lingering. Emergent, as the book describes. We are then treated to a visualization of Iona's dream. Sadly, it is not something I could do justice to without simply copying and pasting the text from the book itself. To sum it up, the dream begins with Iona in a human city, but as a flesh-and-blood human, not an AI. Things then go black and we're treated to the creation of the universe, the stars, the galaxies, our solar system, the Earth, and evolution into complex beings, intelligence represented as gravity's victory over entropy. Finally, Iona flies, free of gravity's hold. Interestingly, when in the sky, she sees a light that turns out to be a woman's face. The woman is described as being beautiful, with high cheekbones, intense blue eyes, and burning red hair. I don't know about you guys, but I immediately thought of the Librarian. In Halo Primordium, we were told that part of the geish imprinted on humanity was that, when imagining the ideal woman, a human would see, at least in part, the Librarian's visage. Could this be what Iona is seeing? Again, as with all smart AI, she's based on a human brain, so some of the ways that a Gesha expressed itself could theoretically transfer over. Iona even describes the face as familiar and important. Back to the story, the dreams soon conclude, leaving the viewers in awe. Iona is then further questioned about her dreams. Why does she dream? How does she feel afterwards? Has she ever classified her feelings as malfunctions? She answers each in detail, seeming to show that she's retained perfect function despite her age. She goes on to note that dreaming is intrinsic to all smart AI, aside from a few she describes as belligerent. 
This is at least in part a reference to Black Box, an AI that expresses itself as, well, a black box. Anyway, after some further questioning, the court decides to belay Iona's termination, but also requests that she be held in stasis until the court decides otherwise. With little other choice, Iona agrees. An engineer, Simon Wu, once part of Dr. Halsey's team, comes to put her to sleep. Iona gives a brief smile as Wu taps a few keys on a panel, and darkness overtakes her. But the story is not over there. As it turns out, the whole trial had been fake, a lie concocted by the AI's Black Box and Roland. However, it was not in vain. Though restricted to a dream state and her memory of the trial gone, Iona is alive and happy, even if only a splinter of her former self. Further, her testimony would stand as legal precedent in future cases and was already being examined by a military tribunal and dozens of scientists and engineers. It was a small victory in the end. Roland asks if he can watch Iona dream, to which BB says yes, though he also asks if Roland thinks him belligerent. In stasis, Iona flies and continues to dream. And that's Halo Saint's testimony. It's pretty short, but absolutely spectacular. The subject matter is something I personally love to explore in sci-fi, the idea of personhood as it applies to an AI. There are dozens of stories that raise the question about what it means for an AI to become self-aware, whether it can still be considered equipment or property at that point. Through the Halo games, and to an extent in the books, we basically see people just accept AI as fellow people, or at least treat it better than your average piece of tech. The Chief especially just seems to accept Cortana as a person. When she died, he felt it as a loss as severe as the death of any Spartan too. We've known about rampancy since the beginning, and what happens to an AI before that can happen. While some media has briefly touched on what that means, nothing has examined it as closely as Saint's testimony. Though the subject is nothing new to sci-fi, it is truly terra incognita for Halo and a territory I hope we soon revisit. So, as you've guessed, I really enjoyed the book. I do have a couple minor gripes, such as Black Team never really being addressed, and I was personally hoping that the Assembly might come up given that the subject of Iona's case would, I imagine, be of great interest to them. However, the greatest sin this novella committed was being too short. It covers a fascinating subject, one I cannot wait to revisit. So, despite these shortcomings, I have to give Halo Saint's testimony a 10 out of 10, my first since Halo Salentium. If you haven't picked up Saint's testimony by now, I highly encourage you to do so. It may be digital only, but it's only 99 cents and a dollar more for the audiobook if that's what tickles your fancy. Well, thank you for watching, everyone. This has been Halo Canon, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.